welcome back to Mickey BRC. Hope you're all doing well. As you can see here, we've got the Freewing PJ50. All assembled, it took, uh, to get it done right, it, it took a little time. The things like the elevator servos were, were off, the, um, the push rods were way out. It almost seems like it's like five mil too long. Um, they wound right in, I started to use sub trim to get into the neutral position. Um, but other than that, you know, it is somewhat of a fiddly kind of aircraft, again, especially when you get the nacelles and the, and the, um, the vertical stabiliser and all that, feeding the wire and so all, all in. Um, <clears throat> nothing which, you know, you couldn't figure out anyway. But really happy with the aircraft and the finish on this is just incredible. So I've added a couple of details to it. Uh, you may have noticed some from some like teaser videos that I've done. Um, I've changed the landing lights. The landing lights were just a... So, um, just uh, stayed on when you deployed the landing gear and then just switched off when, when you retracted them. Um, so I changed that to uh, recognition lights. The full size have the, have the recognition lights. I'm not sure if every single one of them do, but from the videos that I've seen of the full size, a lot of them have those recognition lights and they blink, they alternate like this. It's very cool. Um, if you are interested in those, I actually got mine from the US, from Dave's RC. I'll put a link in the description below. I got the 8mm uh, wigwag light, so if anyone's curious. Um, I also changed the nose wheel light. The nose wheel light was very warm um, in terms of its, its light. It was a uh, warm Kelvin. So I changed that for a more like a cool white, um, which is more representative of the full size. So typically, an aircraft of this age, their light clusters will be LEDs, um, and you know the whites are very white, um, and so I wanted to replicate that as well on the nose wheel. Now I tried to get it in somewhat of a, a more scale position. You probably find the XFly one that has a scale position, and it's got three uh, lights in a cluster. So you have your, uh, your, your basically your, your nose light and your, your taxi lights. I try to get it as close as I can, but just the way the, the Oleo is set up, I can't get it sort of further down. Plus the um, the landing, the nose wheel doors, the mechanism there, it just gets hung up on it. So um, I've just positioned it lower and behind. Um, whereas before, you know, the light was sort of shining into the wheel well. It didn't look quite right, but I'll actuate it for you anyway. So you have a look. <laughs> You can see here, these are, oh, you can see the blink, you can see my hand on the other side, and this light up here is a little lighter as well. So those are the couple of things I've done. I've got a couple other things I really want to do. Um, things like inside the nacelles, I want to paint them like a smoky black. Maybe not at the front leading up to the fan, but definitely at the back. Um, the full size, you know, there's, as you know, the turbines in there, the full size, the, the tail of the exhaust is, is black, so that's something I wanted to do. New scheme on it, uh, like I said, I've got an idea, I've looked at other aircraft, um, or even how Gulfstream paint their aircraft. I found um, a sort of like a, a design which I like, and the colours which I'm wanting to do. A couple of my favourite colours, so doing that. Um, these leading edges, I've got some ideas on that. The full size, you know, these are almost like that sort of finish. So I've got an idea for, for that, instead of just painting it that, that silver colour. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's not a, it was quite an easy plane, but just fiddly. Just so you know, you, it's not going to be an hour to get this up and running, ready to go. Um, you know, just spend a bit of time in it, especially with the servos and linkages and that. Even though they're all, the linkages are all sort of pre-hinged, no, sorry. Even though the linkages are already set up, you're going to have to adjust them. Um, I had to adjust the flaps, I had to adjust the ailerons, I had to adjust the rudder. One thing I did on the rudder, was um, put a carbon rod just because that, that rudder rod is quite long. I don't want it to bend. Not that I'll be using the rudder for anything too outrageous. Um, we're not going to be knife eating this thing. It's not what it does. But I just still wanted to, you know, that to buckle um, under any sort of load. So I just put a carbon rod on there. And um, the elevators, I have separated them from the blue box. For whatever reason, and it's probably just my one, the elevators were chattering when connected to the blue box. They were just moving on their own and that's something you, don't, you do not want to have. So I completely bypassed the uh, blue box for the elevators only, going straight to the receiver. I've even separated them now so I can do the trims on them individually, which I had to do. Those push rods around 
wound right in and now I still had to add a lot of sub trim in to get them to the neutral position. It almost seems like that push, the push rods are too long um, but at any rate we got it sorted. It did take a little while but I'm really happy with the setup. I've gone with the throws as per the manual for high and low rate. Um, being, the, I'm suspecting we're going to have to make some, some smaller changes. Maybe add some crow when deploying the flaps um, and maybe some um, aileron differential. I did do that with the AR37. I'm guessing might have to do it with this as well, just because it's a twin. Twins tend to, you know, drag its butt. <laughs> so, but other than that, it's, um, it's a really cool plane. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. And it's, when you get it all out on the table, it, um, it's big. <laughs> I, I, it looks small in the box, um, but when you put it all out there, yeah, it's, it's fairly sizable. So, really happy with that. Anyway, here is the build video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you at the field. Take care, guys. So, we'll begin in page three of your manual. You're going to need some glue, a hobby knife or a blade, the rear section of the fuselage, and the forward fuselage section. So we'll grab the rear fuselage section and our knife and we're just going to gently score across the surface of which we'll be gluing. You want to score in a crisscross pattern. Uh, this creates more surface area for the glue to adhere to. Creates a stronger bond. And then we repeat that process with the front fuselage section. Again, a crisscross pattern, and uh, it creates more surface area, creates a stronger bond. And then we'll just dry fit the rear and aft sections of the fuselage. It seems to be okay. So now we apply the glue to the uh, fuse halves. You want to apply it liberally but not overdo it. Just get like a smooth film over the surface areas to get a uh, really good adhesion. And also apply a little bit of the carbon rods there. I tend to do it at the tips because as you push the fuselage halves together that's going to smear it all the way up the, the um, carbon rod so you don't want to overdo it. Just gently insert it, hold it there for a few seconds, pull it apart and you want to hold it there for at least 90 seconds before bringing it back together again. Then you push it together and then set aside and leave it to cure. I just have a spare piece of foam and resting the weight on the tail section of the fuselage. That way you get a nice even adhesion and there's a weight pressing down on it. So now we'll go to page four of the manual. You're going to need a screwdriver, Phillips head. Your screw pack, we're going to need the PA 3x10mm screws for this one, two off the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. So you want to unravel the uh, elevator servo wires and you will go get a wire that's included in the pack and route them through the vertical stabilizer. There's a channel in the vertical stabilizer. So we're just gonna route that through. Then we're going to use the go get em wire to route through the second elevator servo. It's easier to do them individually than it is together, otherwise they'll get bunched up. And there we go. So now we're going to just dry fit the vertical and horizontal stabilizers together. 
pulling through the wires to make sure they're not getting caught. Finishing you work the uh, the two pieces together so they seat correctly. And you're going to use your two PA three by ten millimeter screws to secure that in. So we're going to go back to page three. You're going to need a screwdriver. You're going to need four PA three by ten millimeter screws. You're going to need the rear fuselage section, and you're going to need the nacelles. So we're going to unravel all the wiring that's in the rear fuselage section. What might be a good idea, which I forgot to mention at this point or even do, was before you glue the two fuselage halves together, uh, to unravel the wire at that point and feed that through before you glue the two fuse halves together. It doesn't matter if you do or you don't at this point. Um, it may just make it easier for you. Otherwise, you can just use the go get them wire and rattle those wires through. So once you've routed all your wires through, you're left with the connectors for the ESC to the EDFs. There's a little channel there which they're sitting there uh, at the moment. This is where they'll sit when you put the nacelle uh, and you fix it onto the rear section of the fuselage. So the wires for the ESC to the EDFs are color coded. You have a red, a black, and a yellow from the fuse. And then you connect them up to a red, white, and yellow in the nacelle. And they're color coordinated. The black will go into the white, uh, but otherwise yellow to yellow, red to red. So once you have all the wires routed through, the ESC wires, um, you're able to now seat the nacelle into the rear fuselage section. And then using the PA 3x10mm screws for off, you can then uh, screw that down to the rear fuselage section. Now we get everything ready in the tail section for the vertical and horizontal stabilizer. Remembering that there is two elevator servos, so one of them is going to be a reverse servo. Uh, you, and you'll see that from the, the black, white and red wire. But you want to connect the elevators, the rudder and that um, position light, which is at the rear of the, um, the vertical stabilizer. So after you attach all the wires, you want to pull them through the fuselage and then go about seating the vertical and horizontal stabilizer into its position in the rear section of the fuselage. Okay, so you want the FA 3x10mm screws. You need four of these. These are the ones that have a taper um, up to like a flat head. You'll notice them that they're only four that look like that. And these will screw into the vertical stabilizer to affix it to the rear section of the fuselage. So once that's screwed down and it's all connected up, you want to test your surfaces. You can see there that the uh, position light at the rear is blinking. Testing the rudder there and the elevators. So for this next section, you're going to want to go to page five in your manual. You're going to need a screwdriver. The large carbon spar included in the kit. The smaller carbon spar in your hardware pack. Your ribbon cable also in your hardware pack. And of course, your two main wing sections. To fit these in together, you'll need two of the PWM 4 by 8 millimeter screws. There's only two in the pack, you'll need those as well. So you're going to take your carbon spars and insert them into the corresponding uh, holes in the wing. You want to fit the two wing halves together. So once you have the two halves together, again you want to grab those PWM 4 by 8 millimeter screws and affix them to the forward and aft section of the two wing halves. Once the two wing halves are together, you'll have uh, two bundles of the light wires. You want to unravel these and get them ready to route through the fuselage. And maybe a good idea also to, at this point is to attach the ribbon cables before you affix it uh, to the fuselage. 
So you want to get the wing mounted on the bottom of the fuse and then route those wires through using the go get them wire to grab them and pull them through. So again, you've got three lights and you've got your two ribbon cables. The screws you're going to need for this are four M4 by 16 millimeters. They're the only four that look like this. They're the new wing bolts that Freewing now do, where you screw them into the wing and there's like a gap and then that will screw down into the fuselage. Basically what it means is you can take the wings off without having to unscrew the screws from the wings so everything stays together. Nice idea. Um, so that's what you'll want to have for this section of the aircraft. So after all the connectors are in place, the wings are fixed in position, you can begin testing the systems by binding your receiver and then setting all that all up. You can see here that I've added in those uh, wigwag lights as I mentioned at the start of the video. Lights look all very bright, look somewhat scale as well. Really impressed with the aircraft. So here I am adjusting the push rods on the wing, trying to keep it flush. Um, and all of the push rods needed attention on the aircraft. So spend the time and get it right. Here we are, the flaps all set up, ailerons all set up, it's all flush against the wing, so that's I'm really happy with that. A good trick I found for um, centering servos for the elevator is to use uh, two, two pieces of rod, or in this case it's just like a a skewer with a q-tip on the end of it just to see what the elevators are doing i had a lot of trouble with the elevators trying to get them centered right i ended up bypassing the blue box altogether and having the elevators separated for their own channels just so i can get them centered properly so the idea of the sticks is obviously you want to get them to match um, not only in the neutral position but also in its full up deflection and full down deflection. You can see me there changing some trims there to get them into the neutral position. You can see how far out they were from factory. And these are with the rods wound right in. So something to be aware of guys when you're doing the setup of your one is to be mindful of the elevators. Um, any sort of wayward deflection will obviously cause a roll or, or something just adverse which you don't want. So just, just be aware of that. This is a good trick. A couple of pieces of tape. Um, if you've got carbon rods or even like bamboo skewers or something like that, use that and it'll help you get the elevator centered up really nicely. So this is probably one of the better tools that I have in my arsenal, this throw gauge. Unsure where you can get them now. They seem to be really hard to, go, um, to come by, but really handy. I, as I said at the start, I've used the high and low rate that's in the manual. Um, so if you got one of these throw gauges, brilliant. If not, you can use a ruler um, using against the hard surface, say like the center section of the um, vertical stabilizer, and just like mark those areas. So again, I've used the manual settings for this, for the, both the high and the low rate. But this throw gauge is absolutely fantastic. I love it. And here we are again, uh, setting up the throws for the ailerons and the flaps. That about brings us to the end of this build video. Hope it was helpful, guys. Uh, it is an easy aircraft to set up, but you just need to spend some time with it. Thank you for watching, and please remember to subscribe to the Mickey BRC channel and click here to see more videos. Well, come on, pick something.